So we're still in the security and now we're going to talk about context aware access and basically this feature is only available for G Suite Enterprise and Google Cloud Identity Premium customers and the, it, it's also available in the various editions of G Suite Enterprise that is for education and the other stuff I don't know really <laughs> so if you are on business or basic and if you do not have Cloud Identity Premium then you will not see this feature available for you in the admin console now the only reason that I'm seeing this in the admin console is because I'm having Cloud Identity Premium so it's available for me here and the context aware access is a method that allows you to control the user's access to G Suite services and applications based on a specific set of rules that you can decide and set. Basically you can create a set of granular access control policies to applications based on attributes such as user identity, location, device security status and IP address and maybe even OS versions as well you can do it. So in general th there are some use cases for this such as the if you want to allow access to applications only from the company owned devices or company issued devices. If you want to allow access to Google Drive only if the user is having the encryption enabled on his device or in other words, if a user device storage is encrypted. And also another use case is to restrict the access to applications from the outside the corporate network. You'll be able to configure a rule to do such that in the access levels and policies. Now I'm going to show you how to do all of these stuff in here. But before that, I would like also to finish the theory part and theory stuff as well. It's important to get the idea about the general overview, what is context aware access and I think this is required in one of the certifications either in the collaboration engineer or the security engineer I think, I'm not sure. But it's a good idea to have the general idea about it, how you can apply it and how you can create the access levels and so on. So the structure of the context aware access rule or the, the structure of this whole feature is basically you create a, a an access level that contains an attribute. The attribute contains a condition where that condition decides or where that condition will be your criteria to decide if you want to allow or prevent or deny the access to that service. That's also including a, a decision or an action which is a law or deny. And then you can have this whole thing as an app assignment where you can choose to add it on a specific application such as Google Drive or Gmail or Calendar or whatever service that is there. Now we have three types of policies that you can create. We have the IP specific policy that is a public IP range. I think it's only public IP range where you can say that if the user is not coming from this range then either deny access or if the user is not coming from this range then deny access. We have the device policy. I'm not sure if this is a device or whatever thing. <laughs> that specifies the characteristics about the device such as the OS version, the, the, the encryption or the password requirements and all of this. Then we have the geographic rule or the geographic policy that can specify the countries where the user is coming from and if you want to block a whole country then you can do it. If you want to block some group of countries also you can do it and all of this. Now if you break down the three types of the policies they include the following attributes. Now the IP and geographical rules or policies they contain the device type, they contain the operating system that is Mac, Windows or Chrome OS. They contain the access that is specific to web browsers only and they contain the software that is applicable to any browser and all of this. The device policies stuff, they contain the device type, whether it's a desktop or a laptop or whatever. 
and again they contain the operating system whether it is Mac, Windows or Chrome and then the software which is Chrome Web Browser or Chrome Endpoint Verification Extension and all of this. Now once the access level or rule or policy is created you will again need to assign it into an application. That policy will enable access to the application as long as the condition in that policy is satisfied. Now, for example, if you set a policy or an access level to not meet a specific OS version or not meet a subnet range, then the user will only get access to that application when he is not meeting those specific requirements. Let's say that this is useful if you want to build a blacklist of cases where you don't want your user to access a specific service if he is meeting that blacklist condition and, and situation. Now to make it more simple to, to be explained, you can consider setting a policy that is when a user is connecting from the outside of the organization or from the office network, then he will not be granted access to the service. The condition to make is if the user is not coming from the office network, then block him from accessing the service. The other way around is if you want to allow the user to connect only if he is meeting this specific set of conditions, such as only allowing him to connect if he is meeting a specific version of Windows operating system, or if he is coming from a specific device type, then you will set the policy to is or actually meeting those requirements to allow him to access the service or application. Now, there is an error message that you can customize to show to the user when he is prevented from the access or prevented from the service. So you can add some useful input for the user in that error message to let him know what he needs to do or what is he exactly failing to meet so he got blocked from accessing that service and so on. So that's the theory. Now I want to show you how to create the rules and settings and that stuff in here and so on. Now, by default, the context our access comes disabled. So if you want to enable it for your users, you'll have to turn it on here. Once you turn it on, then it will start affecting the users and the policies that you have there and so on. So by default, you don't have any access levels or rules. To start with, you click create a new access level. And you will be requested to add a title for this. So I'm just going to be very generic in here. This. <laughs> and the description is also going to be testing. I'm not sure if I did type it correctly. This thing. Okay. Then clicking continue. Now, this is where I said or where I mentioned that you have to decide whether you want to create the policy to not meeting or meeting the specific conditions or attributes. So I'm keeping it simple here and I'm going just to set it to meet. And then I'm going to add an attribute and the attribute here is as mentioned IP, device type, geographical or access level. The access level means you can use another rule or another level of that. But again, keeping it simple here for the sake of explanation and showing you the, the, the basics in here. I'm just setting it to be IP subnet. And the subnet that I'm choosing is I'm assuming that I have an office. I'm having a company and I'm, I'm having an office and I only want my users to be able to access the service if they are coming from inside the corporate network. So I'm assuming the corporate network range is 123.123.123.123. <laughs> this is the IP that my users reach to the internet from. So if they want to connect to G Suite services, they must reach from this IP. And if I have another condition, I can add it. And then I can add, for example, the device policy and the device must be, let's say that I, I must have a password for the device and I want to have no, no encryption for that or, or actually not supported or whatever. Not encrypted and not supported again. And if I want to limit the Windows operating system, then I can just add the version of that. If I want to do some stuff for Mac, I can do it. If I want to do some stuff for Chrome OS or Chrome browser, I can do it as well and all of this. And if I want them to only connect from a company-owned device, I will just set it to required and that's it. Now, 
this is one condition I can add another condition and I can set and or or relationship between those two so I can have some sort of complexity or some situational conditions on all of this but keeping it simple I'm just going to stick to the one condition that I have added here and also I'm going to only keep it to the IP subnet and then I'm going to create the access level now once the access level is created I simply go to the app assignment and select what application I want to enforce that access level to so let's say that I don't want my users to connect to Gmail if they are outside of the organization and I don't want them to connect to drive and docs from the outside and I don't want them to connect to the calendar from the outside and of course Google Vault because this is very critical service so everything else will be open to them except those very critical core services so once I'm done I'll click assign and I can also do it per organizational unit if I want but I don't want I just want to do it for everyone so I'm clicking assign the access is granted when a user meets conditions in at least one of the selected access levels so again this is what we stated before that if the user meets the condition then he will be granted access to that service or application so I'm clicking save the rule is being added and once I'm done I can simply go back to the context our access home screen and I will see a, a different view now since I have created an access level so this is the access level this is where we assign the access levels to a specific application or service and this is where we can customize the error message for our user so if you click this you will see that the, the very generic <laughs> error message that users will get and you can either add some more helpful information for them and then you can preview the error message this is basically what the users will get when they try to access a service that they are not having access to so it's a good idea to give them some useful information there and finally if you want to enable the service as mentioned you just click turn on and that service will be enabled for your users now context our access is a great service that is something that can integrate with the endpoint verification this is something I will mention in a little bit so endpoint verification and context our access are two services that work together to make sure your data and your company information are secured and only accessed from the devices that you really want and no other users or no other stuff that are accessing the services while they should not access these services and applications for me this is one of the big reasons or big motivations to go cloud identity premium or even go g suite enterprise because the level of security and the level of control that you will get is very awesome and very great that you will be really tempted to go with this if you don't have this enabled already in your organization